This tutorial will help you learn how to convert between SI units in the SI system. The SI system uses prefixes that are when added to a base unit such as grams, meters, liters, and so on can form a new unit. The difference in these prefix values is on a scale of 10. Therefore, converting between one unit and another is quite simple because with a movement of a decimal to the right or to the left, we can convert units easily. But we have to know in which direction do we move this decimal and how many places do we move it if we're trying to convert between one unit and another. Let's take a look at the prefixes first off. Base units have a value of zero. Ground level, 10 to the zero power. Anything above this line would have the larger units. For example, kilo has a value of 10 to the third as a prefix, which means it's a thousand of a base unit. So taking kilo and gram would be kilogram. A kilogram is 1,000 grams. Kilo and meter would make a kilometer, 1,000 meters, and so on and so forth. We don't typically use very large values such as mega and giga, etc. in the natural and physical sciences. So the only one we're really going to even work with is kilo. However, we do use smaller prefixes. And you can see here, a few of them here are listed for you. You can see that these have negative exponents, which means they are fractional values. Milli, for example, is 10 to the negative third, which means it is 1 out of 1,000 or 0 .001. It represents 1,000th of a base value. So a milligram would be 1,000th of a gram. Or alternatively, you could say that there are 1,000 milligrams in every one gram. Now that we're aware of what the prefixes are and their values, how can we convert from one value to another, from one unit to another? First of all, let's look at the direction. If you are converting from a larger unit to a smaller unit, for example, kilogram to gram, you would move the decimal place to the right. If you were going back, say from grams to kilograms, a smaller unit to a larger unit, you would have to move the decimal to the left. That's why knowing the values of these prefixes is very important. You'll have to know numerically what the value is and obviously which one is larger and smaller. Then you'll know which way to move your decimal, to the right or to the left. Then we need to know how many places to move this decimal because for each decimal place that you move, it's equivalent to 10 values. Let's take a look at this example. Convert kilogram to gram. Kilogram is a value of 10 to the third. Gram is the base at a value of 10 to the zero. So again, a difference of a value of 10. The difference between 10 to the third and 10 to the zero is three. Therefore, we'll be use, moving our decimal place three places. Given that we're going from kilogram to gram, larger to smaller unit, we'll move the decimal place to the right and a difference of three units, so three places to the right. Let's take a look at an another example. 89 milligrams is how many kilograms? Again, we'll look at milli, which happens to be a value of 10 to the third. Negative, so 10 to the negative third. Kilogram is 10 to the positive third. How many difference in places is that? 3 to 0 is 3, and 0 to 3 is another 3. That's a total of 6. Don't worry about the positive exponents and the negative exponents. Simply count the total number of places you would have to move your decimal if you're going from a 3 to a 0 to another 3. That's a total of 6 places. So let's take a look here. We need to move our decimal six places. Now in which direction should we do that? Since we're going from a smaller to larger unit, again, smaller to larger unit, we would move it to the left. And so there we go. 
moving this decimal place, which is right here as an understood value, and we'll move it back one, two, three, four, five, six places until we have this many kilograms. Now, because this is such a small number, we don't want to leave it as such. And we certainly don't want to do that if we have a very large number. So in science, when we have very large or small numbers, we don't typically like to show a great deal of zeros in the numerical value. So we write the number, or rewrite the number, in proper scientific notation. This is a standardized way of writing large and small numbers. The standard is that you will only have one, and only one number, to the left of the decimal. That means this number has to be 8.9. Just the 8 is allowed to the left, no more, no less. 8.9 times, we have to account for moving this decimal back and making it 8.9. So we have to move it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places to make it 8.9. So that's times 10 to the 5. That's where we got the 5. Now should this 5 be positive or negative? Well, this is a small number and we have just made it into a larger number. See how 8.9 is much larger than this? So because we moved the decimal over 5 places to make it a larger number, we must make this number now small. So that when we read it, we know that this negative sign tells us to move it back five spaces to the left and restore it to its true value. The final answer could either be 0 0.000089 kilograms or 8.9 times 10 to the negative fifth kilograms. Either way would be correct, but this is the more correct way of writing this particular value and correct scientific notation. Again, don't forget that it's simply taking the difference in values. If you were going from centi to milli, the difference between 2 and 3 would be 1. You would move your decimal place 1 place. If you were going from centi to micro, the difference between 2 and 6 would be 4, and so on and so forth.